Let's just take a date. Let's take let's take a minute to look at the uh, the original uh, on the back of the title page shows where we're going with this unit. We have looked at the first uh, three of these, right? Am I right in saying that? We have looked at the first three of these. You might not have worked on tons of this at this point, but uh, we should be hopefully ready to uh, move forward here. There's kind of a little bit of a break if you think about it here because these are all solving equations. This is all working with trig identities. And then, then the last thing is putting the two of those together, solving equations that involve identities. Um, both of these things are things you need to kind of work at to get. This is probably working with identity is probably the thing that you need to do more practice on to kind of get it because every identity you look at is different to some extent. Uh, equations, once you've you know done a, enough of them, they all look kind of the same. So, uh, anyways, uh, if you flip to five four, okay, reciprocal and quotient identities. You actually already know these identities. You might not know what the word identity means right at this point, but you will. Um, what we're going to be doing with them at the beginning here is uh, using different kinds of trig identities to simplify expressions. So it's it's like a lot of the algebraic stuff you learned, grade 9, 10, 11. And in fact, a lot of that, we have to kind of look back at some of that algebraic stuff because it's going to be applicable here. Now let's just say from the outset here that working with trig identities, not tons of applications to real life. You can't really say, you know, what are we learning this for when you're doing this in grade 12? This is all pre-calculus kind of uh, theoretical math. All right. Well, if you're, if, if you're going to, if, no, it's part of the course. You need to know it for this course, but it isn't, I mean, the last two units we do are probability and combinatorics. You can see, you know, applications of that all over the place, right? But this, you know, there's not going to be any word problems or real life, you know, trig identities unless it's George was trying to solve this trig identity. Can you help him? But, I mean, that there's no, uh, not necessarily. Now, I say that and then somebody will say, well, no, this is not true. You could, this could represent something. I mean, I guess some of these weird functions might represent, I don't know what that looks like as a graph. Maybe it looks like some uh, weird thing like this, but maybe there's something that that represents. But what we're doing with it is, you know, like when you learn to factor things, um, in grade nine, you learn to write this as factors. Well, that step right there, there's no, you know, real life uh, meaning for that. But then later on, you look at, quadratic functions and you graph them and you represent real life things with that. So so as one piece all by itself here, this is not going to mean much. But that being said, I think uh, if you work at it here, you get the hang of it. Especially if you try to make the connection between what you've learned before and uh, what it is here. When you, uh, when you graph functions like, I don't know, y equals x squared, and at some point you learned about function notation, and then somehow that, just making that change there, this change from here to here, using using function notation made people think that it's more difficult. This is exactly the same function. You can write a function with function notation, uh, or you can write it just like that. It's going to be the same thing here. All the algebraic skills you learned with this. So if you knew, if you know you can write this as, how could you write that if you factored it? This a plus B A. Factor out the A, right? If you factor out the A, what do you have? One plus B. So you can do the same thing with this. This is going to be the same as you have to look at this as this is a single variable and this is another variable. Just treat that as a number, right? Whatever X is, it happens to be. Just the same way that this is, that's a number and this is another number and you can factor it out, right? You can factor that out in front and you're left with the other stuff. So how could you write that expression? If you factored out that sine, you could put the sine x out here and put the rest in in a bracket. One plus cosine. Okay. So somehow people forget that what you learned before is you just tra you know make that connection. And if you're not sure, if you see an expression, what could I try and do with this? Think back to what you might do if it was just variables like that, or even just what if it was numbers, right? What would I do here? If you're adding two fractions like that, what would you do if it's two numbers? Or, you know, this thing, what would you do with this? 
because probably this triggers more your memory than seeing it in this form. Let's uh, not get ahead of ourselves. How can I factor this a squared minus 4? There's no common factor there, so you got to try something else. you got to try this. A plus 2 is not both a plus 2 because that would be something different, right? A plus 2, a minus 2, right? Because then there's no middle term here. It's a difference of squares. Middle term cancels out. It's the same thing with this. Um, you could write it as two binomials here. But the 1 comes first, so that means these are both going to be 1s. 1 plus sine x. What does the other one have to be here? 1 minus sine x. You can check that it works, right? You can see that this is 1 times 1 gives us the 1 here. And we've got plus sine x <coughs> minus sine x, so those cancel out. Okay? When you're in grade 9, it's a it's a surprise every time that that cancels out. When you ask grade 9s to do you know this times this, hopefully we're past that. Maybe it's still a surprise to you. X times X is X squared plus 3X minus 3X minus 9. Oh, hey, what do you know? These cancel out. Like grade nines, every, even if they've done a thousand questions, every time it's, oh, hey, what do you know? They cancel out. They don't, I want you to have the pattern so that you can go straight to this. If it's a surprise to you, that's okay. Okay, but hopefully we can kind of go back and forth between this and this without a big uh, struggle, particularly if we're, if we're multiplying it out. Uh, whether it's, you know, it, it's harder to recognize now because it's sine x instead of just a variable. If you have algebraic fractions with trig functions in them, you need to be able to combine those together. Think about what would you have done if it said one half plus one third. You'd make a common denominator, absolutely, right? You'd make a common denominator, so, you know, you'd have to multiply this one by three and this one by three, this one by two and this one by two. So if it's variables, you would have done the same thing. This you would have to multiply by b over b because multiplying by b over b is not changing it. b over b is 1. Timesing by 1 doesn't change it. And this is times a over a. Oops. So you'd have b over ab plus a over ab. Or in other words, you'd have, well, a plus b or b plus a on top over ab. Notice you don't make it a squared, b squared, or something on the bottom. Like over here we have 3, 6 plus 2, 6. You don't make it contrary to what my grade eights think. You don't make it five twelfths, right? You make it five sixths. The denominator is what it is here. Um, so then, if we're trying to add these two fractions, exactly the same concept, right? Anything you can do algebraically with numbers or expressions, you can do with these kind of expressions. What's that going to be equal to? What are each of those? What's the common denominator here? Yeah, cos x times sine x or sine x times cos x. The first one you would have to multiply to get that common denominator, what would you have to multiply that first one by? Yeah, you have to have sine x over sine uh, oh, on top and bottom. If, if you're okay with it, you can go straight to this as long as you can see that all you've done is put one of those on each side. Just like over here, if you really wanted to, you don't have to show, oops, you don't have to show this, um, multiplying by b over b and then write this if you want. It's okay now if you just go straight from there to here because you realize that you have to put a B on the top and the bottom. It's okay if you go straight to there, but if you want to write over here, sine X, sine X, that's okay, right? And write over there. I'm going to leave it off of here now because it's going to get to be way too big otherwise. And then the other half of that, what's the other one going to be? Same denominator. Yeah, it's going to be cos X on top, right? And then if I combine those together... What do I get? Yeah, on the top here, you get sine x plus cos x over, and it's not cos squared, sine squared or anything. It's just that denominator, right? When you're adding two fractions. Now, can you start crossing stuff off? Because I know you're tempted to do that. This is very tempting to say, oh, look, I can cross off. There's one the same on the top and the bottom. No, you can't. Why not? Yeah, it's adding on top. You can't do it unless it's all a single term there. Okay, you'd have to have this entire thing on the bottom as a bracket to cross off. You could only cross off that entire binomial on the top. Anyways, that expression is the same as that expression. You could confirm that that's true if you wanted on your calculator by graphing them. Okay, you could graph. You, well, you could confirm it a few different ways. Are we okay? 
Ten minutes. Wow, that was fast. Ten minutes.